Today in Dave's Garage, I'm going to investigate and explain why a lot of people and even calculators get a simple math problem wrong. And then I'm going to spend a few weeks in the comments section arguing with people. Find out why right here, right now. Hey, I'm Dave. Welcome to my shop. I'm Dave Plummer, a retired software engineer from Microsoft going back to the MS-DOS and Windows 95 days. And way back when, I actually owned development of the Windows calculator for a while. This was just about the time after NT4 when we were converting it to infinite precision internal math libraries, and it meant that everything about how calculator calculated was changing. Thoughts of a PR disaster like the Pentium floating point bug kept me up at night. The last thing you wanted back in the 1990s was to turn on CNN and hear Bernard Shaw tell you that Windows can't do math. The Windows calculator. Why does it not calculate? And what don't they want you to know? Leaving Windows for a moment and turning to my real desktop, I've had the same calculator for over 40 years now. It's the Sharp EL5103S, the very one that my mom bought for me to take to high school back in 1982. It was a great calculator then, and it's still my primary calculator today. I also have my first football, my first baseball glove, my first bat, my first car, and my first wife. I tend to hang on to the good stuff. Now, back to the calculator. The amazing thing is that I've only changed batteries twice in it in all of those 40 years. It works well, and I've managed not to lose it yet, and it serves me well. Like a lot of calculators, though, it has a dark secret. It gets some answers wrong. Let me show you an example. We'll enter one of those expressions that you see go viral on Facebook every now and then, this one is 6 divided by 2 multiplied by 2 plus 1 within parentheses. When we hit enter, we get 1. If you didn't know better, you might accept that as the answer, but you'd be wrong. And if you enter that expression into any modern calculator, like the one on Windows today or on a Mac, or even if you enter it into Google or Wolfram Alpha or any of the other similar ones, you get the right answer, which is 9. Now, you might be looking at it and initially siding with my old calculator, because it looks pretty straightforward, right? We'll apply PEMDAS to start solving it. For those of you who've forgotten PEMDAS from high school algebra, it's an acronym to help remember the order of operations that you need to apply in order to properly solve a mathematical expression. The letters stand for parentheses, exponents, multiplication and division, addition and subtraction. And that's the order in which you simplify and evaluate things within the expression. Now, for operators of equivalent precedence, and this is important, like addition and subtraction or multiplication and division, you proceed left to right. So if you do it in that order, the first thing you would do is to solve the 2 plus 1 within the parentheses, which leaves you with 6 divided by 2 with 3 in the parentheses. So naturally, you multiply the 2 times the 3 to yield 6 divided by 6, right? And that has to be 1. And that's precisely what my sharp calculator does, and I assure you that it is in fact wrong. Let's have a look at where we made our first mistake, because it was actually very early on. Our first step was correct. That step was to solve within the parentheses. And just like last time, we just changed the 2 plus 1 to be 3. But here's where a lot of people make the same mistake as the calculator. That's because the right move at this point is to drop the parentheses and convert them to simple multiplication. Once you're down to a single simplified term, that's when you do it. But most folks intuitively keep the parentheses and then use their special precedence a second time, and that's a mistake. Because what you're supposed to do is that when you've solved the expression within the parentheses, you replace the contents with the result and change the parentheses to multiplication. So let's try it that way. 6 divided by 2 times 2 plus 1 in parentheses. We solve the 2 plus 1 and we get the result of 3 and we replace the parentheses now with multiplication. 6 divided by 2 multiplied by 3. Now we solve left to right. 6 divided by 2 is 3, and then we multiply that by the final term of 3, and we get the correct answer of 9. You can, of course, confirm this with any trustworthy modern expression evaluator. But what about, let's say, Windows Calculator? Can it provide the right answer, and did it always do so? Well, there's only one way to find out, and that's to start with Windows 1 and try it out. So let's do that now. Okay, let's bust out the OG Calc. That'll be Calculator from Windows 1.01. .01. And unfortunately... There are no parentheses or any support for it. We'll try typing it in manually and just hitting parentheses, see what it does. And for, no, that's wrong no matter how you look at it. So let's move on to Windows 2.0. And there's Calc. And it has not changed a lot from Windows 1.0. All right, let's move on to Windows 3.1. Everybody loved Windows 3.1. It must have had a scientific calculator, right? Well, let's find out. We'll switch it to scientific mode, and there you go. 
Now it does support parentheses. The only catch is that you can't put them right next to a term. You have to actually use a multiplication operator. So we'll say six divided by, and then we'll enter two. And this is where we have to put the multiplication operator, which probably is what saves this, I bet. Two plus one, close the parentheses. Correct. So Windows was at least always correct for as long as it supported parentheses, in part due to the way that it made you enter things. Now I know there was a scientific calculator Windows 95 because that's the origins of the one that I eventually owned. So we'll take a look at calculator here. We'll switch it to scientific mode. Now this is pretty clearly just an evolution of the Windows 3.1 code base. And so I'm going to guess it performs and it behaves exactly the same way. We'll put in the same expression, close parentheses equals nine. And so Windows 95 is also correct. When it comes to parsing expression like six divided by two times a parenthetical two plus one, as humans, we can do it efficiently and effectively by using the PEMDAS rules. Our brain applies them globally to the expression in the right order. But if you're a computer, the way humans write mathematical expressions isn't particularly conducive to being easily processed. The notation that we use is called infix notation. I try to remember that the operator is in the expression when it's infix. But expressions can be converted to another notation called postfix for much easier processing using a simple stack algorithm on the computer. The post and postfix serves to remind me that the operator comes after the operands. The whole process is a bit complicated to explain here, but suffice to say that the parser processes the infix notation and creates a tree structure out of it, where nodes or operators in their leaves can be numbers or other operators, and it's nested all the way down. The beauty of this is that if you walk the tree using one set of rules, you get the original infix version, but walked another way, you get the postfix version, so you can convert back and forth pretty easily. The reason this works well for computers is that the postfix version can be easily represented as a stack, and computers are even better at stacks than they are with trees. So it walks the expression tree in a particular order, postfix, builds a stack in postfix, and then evaluates that stack. Now, rather than writing code to convert from infix to postfix, however, I suppose you could just, in theory, require the user to actually figure it out on their own and enter the whole thing already in postfix, ready to push onto the stack and process. There actually were calculators way back when that used postfix notation. It was extensively used back on HP calculators like the HP 35. And in fact, if you're an engineer, there's a good chance that your dad or his dad might have used an RPN calculator. If the notion of making the user do the work for you doesn't bother you, then RPN is a precise and unambiguous format, which can't be overstated, which is probably why it's popular with engineers. Whereas if a programmer suspected an error, they would just reboot the calculator and try again. And if that didn't work, maybe try taking the batteries out. Now, speaking of programmers, let's go back to some really old software, VisiCalc by Dan Bricklin and Bob Frankston, released back in 1979. I'll just boot up my original IBM 5160 PCXT, press the Microsoft Mach 10 button for a boost of super speed, and we can see if VisiCalc gets the right answer. As I enter the expression, I notice that I'm forced to insert the multiplication operator explicitly, which solves the problem, and so VisiCalc from 1979 does produce the right answer with the same caveat that we have to apply to Microsoft Calc. It doesn't accept the pure algebraic form and requires the user to be explicit about the order. Let's take a look at a few more flexible online calculators to see how they fare. First, we'll try Google. Well, Google gets it right because it does a very important step. It explicitly inserts the multiplication step for us, even based on giving it the original expression. And so Google does it right. Using a PEMDAS calculator online, we can run the expression through it and see the individual steps that it takes. As we can see, the first thing it does is to process whatever is within the parentheses, converting it to the result of three and then disposing of the parentheses once that initial term is solved. And that's the important part. Next, we divide six by two, and from there we wind up with three times three, which is nine. And if you're curious, both ChatGPT 3.5 and ChatGPT 4 get the correct answer. ChatGPT 4 is a little better at explaining its work, so let's take a look at that one. Step one, parentheses first. It evaluates two plus one and replaces it with three, which makes the equation now six over two times three. In step two, it performs the division before the multiplication because those operators are of equivalent precedence and therefore it proceeds left to right. That leaves us with three times three, which is nine, the correct answer. Now, for those of you still agitating for an answer of one, I'll throw you a small bone. 
If you go back far enough into the ancient history of mathematics, there was a rule whereby the funky inline division sign meant that you divided the term on the right by the left explicitly. Since you'd then evaluate the right-hand term to be 6, you'd get 6 divided by 6. But that hasn't really been true since about 1915. And coincidentally, my grandfather was born in 1915, so if he were to make this mistake, I'd cut him some slack because A, he'd be 108 years old, and B, he passed away a long time ago. But for the living, you've got to follow PEMDAS and discard completed parentheses, and then it solves itself. In my estimation, engineering doesn't leave a lot of room for personal preference, and unlike Monopoly, mathematics isn't a game you should play by your set of home rules. But to give the dissenters one more way to look at it, consider this. The expression includes a division by a factor of 2 outside the parentheses, so we can pull that out and down and rewrite the expression as 6 over 2 times the parenthetical 2 plus 1. That simplifies to 3 times 3, which gives us the correct answer. As long as you're cool with pulling the 2 down into the denominator, and I contend that's completely legit, then this one's hard to argue with. If you still don't agree, before you flame me in the comments, all I ask is that you watch the video one more time at 75%. Just kidding. Sometimes my humor is a little too dry, I guess. And I did totally steal that from Gerald Undone, but that's cool because he's Canadian. If you found today's episode to be any combination of entertaining or informative, I'd be honored if you'd consider subscribing to my channel. In fact, I'm mostly in this for the subs and likes, so please leave me one of each before you go today. If you have any interest in matters related to Asperger's, ASD, or autism, check out the free sample of my book on Amazon, Secrets of the Autistic Millionaire. Ironically, it has nothing to do with money and everything to do with living a successful life on the spectrum. It's everything I know now that I wish I'd known back then. Thanks for joining me out here in the shop today. In the meantime and in between time, I hope to see you next time, right here in Dave's Garage.